Uh, double up. Uh, uh. <laughs> Two cracks are better than one. That's right. Well, <laughs> he's stupid. We're going to start week four out with uh, let's talk about the Carolina Panthers and the Washington Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you see next you week. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyhow, I think we talked about joking the- around. <laughs> it feels so good when he jokes. <laughs> it feels so good when he jokes. We, uh, we, we let off last week and, and spent plenty of time talking about the Browns. We're going to give the Cardinals and Josh Rosen not a whole podcast, just a small segment here. We think the give Cardinals, a little love. They Cardinals deserve a little uh, run here. They've been just the laughing stock of the league, dead last in a lot of categories. Not that statistically anything was off the charts this week, but looking at the game, it was much better than right. the stats. Rosen show. has rendered Sam Bradford useless. Yeah, that, that game's over. He's actually, they called him third string now, so right. they, he's just collecting paychecks. Gosh. Collecting mad paychecks. As he Sam does. Bradford. As just he does. Bravo, sir. He Good for has him. Got bravo. The paycheck. So rich. He is filthy rich. Tons so, of injuries, though. Good but. for him. Um, and good for Josh Rosen. Good for the Cardinals. Man comes in here slinging it all over the place. Right. Gives you a nice spark on offense. There's movement. There's a little movement. <laughs> oh, it moved. <laughs> it's six to midnight, baby. It moved. Casey came in here in the preseason and told us in the offseason said he liked Rosen more than the other quarterbacks long term the best. And it didn't take long for him to get in there and look look really good. If these guys weren't dropping every pass that came their way, mm. sure. His stat line would have been a lot better. But it was just enough of a spark to get the whole team jacked up, which obviously that happens with most any quarterback change, but you know, the like Jason said, just spend the laugh and just probably statistically the worst start to a offense to a, in the to start a year that you could ever ask for. They didn't even get to like to the opponents fifty in well, one game. The, the big like right off the rip, obviously with the the O gets a spark and all that stuff. But I mean, just at the end of the game, Rosen picked up ten first downs, and that's from four first downs and six first downs the previous two weeks with Bradford in there. Right. Like, and it's just just. Right there is, yeah. And there was, and again, a couple of big drops. Yeah, filter in that back, game, filter back in the drops, which would have bumped up the yardage and the first down, and sustained some more drives to right. give you ability to get even more first downs. So this was, this was interesting. I, th- I, I thought, you know, we saw Baker come in and play his first game, and he didn't. Baker certainly didn't play bad, but there were some turnovers in that game for Baker, and you know, it wasn't, it wasn't. Uh, obviously, the the end of the story wasn't as good for Baker in this particular game. Um, but you, you had Rosen come in here and we'll see what happens week two. But it was a nice spark for the offense. The offense. Uh, what I guess what I was getting at was that it didn't seem like there was quite as much spark on the Cleveland offense this go round as as last go round. But they still scored a ton of points. Well, so I guess I guess they're I guess. I mean, they scored 40 right. something points and it hey, was that's don't lie. Baker do didn't they? lose that stats game lie. for him. Baker might try no, to shoulder the sure. load and say, hey, we, I lost the game. But I mean, the first he got a pick to the house on the first drive. It was a tip ball, you know, and it, right. but it, and but. Yes, Bakers that that offense moved. They they scored a ton of points, and that that Browns the Browns should have won that game. They were up twenty eight to right. fourteen and started giving the ball away, and then they actually got a first down, and the NFL took it away from them. The refs took it away sure. from them, so they should have won. But yes, we didn't see. You know the the first time when when Baker came into the game, it was like the, the light switch turned on for the whole team. They were getting crushed, and then all of a sudden they weren't getting crushed. They came back and 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 won the game. This week, Rosen. It was, it still was a tale of two teams. It maybe wasn't quite as dramatic as as the week before when you know uh, Baker comes in and halfway through the game and saves the day. But I think everything that Rosen did, obviously, it's going to bring in bring. He's peppering all the he spread the ball around to all the different receivers. See Ricky Seals Jones gets involved, brings back David Johnson. He's just doing it all. Yeah, I mean, the the most impressive thing to me was the poise that he showed, I think. He looked calm and collected out there. He started off a little sporadic. He was missing some guys wide and behind him a little bit. Missed Larry um, to start that drive off after David Johnson got him a nice first down on two rushing attempts, which was awesome. Right, um, right. But then he settled down, and he was delivering strikes. And like you guys already mentioned, there was some big plays that really could have boosted his yardage total. J.J. J. J. Nelson dropped the big one. Uh, Christian Kirk should have had another one. Um, Kirk had a, had a, a touchdown in the end zone that, that he could have had. He, well, he was wide open on one play, 
and and Rosen forced it to Chad Williams instead. Didn't see him wide open in the corner. And then there was a play, I think it was before that, earlier in the game, when he actually threw it up to Kirk, and he went up and got the pass interference call. Didn't come down with the ball. David Johnson gets a short rushing touchdown. Yeah. Where that could have been a Josh Rosen touchdown. Um, there was some... <clears throat> There were some penalties they had on first down. They're still doing things that bad teams do. But, that was a rookie's first start. But overall, I mean, Jesus, is, it looked like this offense has some life, which was great to see. Yeah. Uh, it, just looked like, it just looked like there's actual pieces out there. There's players. There's valuable players to be had. Larry Fitz looked like he was getting healthy. Uh, he was healthier than, than it made it sound before the game, I thought, the way he looked anyways. Obviously, the stat line didn't come through for you. Kirk, we're going to talk about him in a little bit. He's coming right along. DJ's the same DJ he's always been. Chad Williams is a big play lurking. So I, I definitely like where this offense is going, and I'd be trying to buy in onto some of these pieces before too long. We're just backed up against two, three straight weeks of people hating on David Johnson. We came on here last week and told you to buy him low because he's still David Johnson, multi-threat. The one of the biggest things about this offense is obviously you lost Bruce Arians, who was a you know a genius, and then you lost Carson Palmer, who was basically the opposite of the guy that brought in. You brought in um, Bradford, who's a check down, high accuracy kind of guy, and Carson Palmer is a force it down the field and stretches out the defense. So now, which check down, high accuracy would have been awesome if either of those were happening when Bradford was in there. Well, that's true. Well, so. it's a shell of him. Yeah, he right. wasn't the same old Bradford. Right. That, you know, if there was the same old Bradford, right. but so yeah, really bad turn of events for the Cardinals. But you get a little bit of mix of both of those because. Rosen's a high accurate type of guy, high IQ quarterback. And so now if Rosen takes this offense forward, then that's going to open up. That's what David Johnson needed. I mean, it's not, he didn't, Josh Rosen isn't going to turn into Carson Palmer overnight, but as Josh Rosen goes and grows with this team, we've seen the spark this week. We've seen things start to open up and we've seen the coaches come in, like you said, right away, get a couple of carries for David Johnson, start to move forward, gets a couple catches, gets the touchdown. Um, Obviously, only four targets, but again, it's traditionally these two teams, Seahawks, Cardinals, it's just been a you know a hated rivalry, defensive slugfest. Even when both of those offenses were clicking, when these two teams play, scoring slows down. That's kind of how it's been. So you go back, you get into this game here, twenty to seventeen. Both teams were missing field goals. It easily could have been in the mid to high twenties in type of scoring. So that I think that plays that that makes you feel so that much more comfortable with the Cardinals offense moving forward. And David Johnson, you know, I think you could probably carry uh, maybe into the next week a still continue into that buy low window um, because he really didn't crush it. Twelve for seventy one and a touch and a couple catches, but that's just this just enough a spark to show you that you know Josh Rosen is enough to bring this team around to being real, just not being the worst offense in the league is what David Johnson needs. Absolutely. Um, I think the stat line, like you mentioned, doesn't look as good as I thought Larry was playing. playing. He did lose a fumble, which was a big bummer for them. Um, but it looked like he was getting a solid yard yards per carry. There was plenty of runs that were bigger than – there were five yards or more. I know it ended up being like 3.2. Um, but I think, you know, you saw the highest – receiving yardage total of the year uh three catches on 41 for 41 yards which is which is great to see i think when rosen goes back and looks at the tape he's going to see more of dj being open a ton in the flats right with like no one around him and you know he was he was to his credit trying to force the ball downfield and he was trying to trying to make that offense go but Man, there's David Johnson sitting wide open in the flats a ton. Like if you get him the ball right there, it's not only gonna be awesome for DJ's PPR floor, but it's gonna help move this offense along, chip away, sustain drives, and move the ball down the field. Well, not only does Josh Rosen go and say, Hey, I had David Johnson in the flats, now you got the other team's defense next week, the coordinators going and looking and saying, Okay, Josh Rosen, I've seen a game of his in the NFL and he's legit and he had these passes up the scene down the sideline, finding wide open finding receivers and putting good balls in them whether they called it or not he did, there were some good catches in this game for the cardinals for sure and some big time drops so not only does the you know the cardinals go back and self-scout and say okay this is what we could have done better now you go into next week the other team's defense is looking around on the off on, during the week being like wow this this is not the same cardinals offense that we have got used to seeing the first couple weeks certainly not and I'd, I'd be trying to buy some david johnson still i mean it could have been a bigger day for him. I think there are bigger days ahead. I'll be trying to give him up, trying to still acquire him for sure, right? 
I mean, what are you going to give up to get David Johnson? I, if, if you had two firsts, I'd give up two firsts. Sure. Anything else? I still, I'd, I'd give up two first round picks for David Johnson. Yeah. All day, I give up a, a 19 and a 20. I mean, I guess or if you, you have two, got those. Or if you have two this year, go, you know, if you have two yours 19s. and somebody else's, yeah, I'd give that up for David Johnson. All right. Well, you got anything to add to DJ? We've kind of beat the. Yeah, beat the horse. No, we've I'm talked. We, we were we're well on record being huge DJ lovers. We've always uh, beat the horn, beat the drum for David Johnson. So go get him before it's too late. Let's talk about another guy in this Cardinals offense that uh, the stat line didn't necessarily represent how he looked on the field. Christian Kirk. I thought he looked spry as hell. I thought he was doing things that we saw and liked from him in college. He was getting a bunch of screen passes, jetting up field with those. There was a ton of that in college, except. In the NFL, he's not the only good person on the team. Right. Um, he was going in motion, moving moving all over the formation, going everywhere, uh, getting getting a handoff. I thought he looked great with the ball in his hands. Yak is one of his specialties, which is, you know, one of my favorite attributes for anyone to have is to be able to get Yak. You know, you have Yak that can render your A dot useless, you know, and I don't have to <laughs> hear about that anymore. Um, and, and we've mentioned it. We've referenced it. He could have had a bunch more in this game. He could have had a big, long catch in the first quarter, didn't come down with it, was wide open in the end zone, got another t- uh, end zone uh, look that he drew a uh, pens- pass interference on. Gosh, I'm fumbling through this here. Uh, so I feel like he's on the verge of busting out. This dude's bursting at the seams, but it hasn't showed up on the stat line. So there's still some by low opportunity here, right? Well, this is this is the the game that we play in Dynasty. You you know, uh, you and Casey both said about two weeks ago that all the rookie wide receivers that came into this league this year were just you know hadn't done a whole lot, and and it was a good time to strike if that was something you were interested in doing. And sure enough, um, you know, Calvin Ridley goes and blows up two games in a row here, Ooh. and those types of things like you put your mark, your rookie wide receiver Calvin Ridley's put his mark on the on the NFL now and on your fantasy team, and now his what it takes to buy Calvin Ridley today is probably three X what it was two weeks ago. And like you say, and Christian Kirk just hasn't done it yet. You know, DJ Moore, another guy who hasn't done it yet, had a big 50 yard touchdown a couple weeks ago. It's just not cemented that dynasty value and taking a step forward with Christian Kirk out there running around. You see the juice, you see what you liked about him in college. He obviously has super strong hands. He's not afraid to go over the middle. The team scheming him all over the formation is what you wanted to see because that was one of the things we were kind of worried about is what they would chew and pi- like where would would he end up getting pigeonholed somewhere while we waited on Larry Fitzgerald to go into retirement or whatever. And there wasn't a ton of buzz on him in the off season. You know they had Chad Williams listed ahead of him in right, the depth chart. Right, and, and, and kind of drop some of that lull, that luster that he carried from the draft absolutely and, and that's that's the thing i mean you, people you, you know you really are when you're playing dynasty fantasy football you're you play you're you know you're here to have, you're here to have a good time but you also have to understand that it is it's a week-to-week league and there's a lot of what have you done for me lately and especially with the dynasty and the younger guys that you know we see them people just get tired of them not doing a whole lot from a couple weeks and get kind of bored or all of a sudden you got a guy like Ridley who's tearing it up and now he's being winning polls on Twitter over Amari Cooper you know so it's so it's so fit you know it's just like finicky of somebody it's either all or nothing almost and so somebody like Christian Kirk just have to pay attention and see the team using him all over the place but I also like the fact that I did I, I like the fact that Chad Williams got the touchdown I like the fact that we saw you know, the J.J. Nelson target, even though it was just a short one, just trying to spread the ball around a little bit, and there's nothing wrong. You there's nothing I, you, you love for fantasy to know exactly where the targets are going to go. You like to see that that tight distribution of targets, but it's also kind of nice sometimes when you use the other guys that you have to stretch the defense out so they can't just lock on to your player. And when Christian Kirk's moving around and taking – you know, some sc- they're set up a screen pass for him here and there. It's, it's nice to know that when it gets clicking, the target should be there. Right. And that was kind of my point when you watched Christian Kirk in college versus Alabama. They tried to do the same thing they did with him all year, which is just throw him a ton of screens. He's basically their running game, and Alabama locked that shit down. Oh, they were no, blowing him up. There was nobody else they had to worry about on the, in that offense for Texas A&M. So uh, I like where this is going for Kirk. How about, Will, let's play a little game here. Christian Kirk or... All right. Let's start easy. Christian Kirk or John Brown? Oh, it's Kirk for me. Yeah, that's the easy one, right? 
Well, John Brown's producing in your lineup right now, so I don't know how easy it is, but I will say that... If, playing Dynasty here. Yeah, I mean, John Brown, he lost our confidence for two full years, and that's it. Right. But, uh, you know, so I can't... I can't, I can't fault you if you would lean John Brown there and you're playing that short game. But if you want to b- play the long con on him, you got. I think you got to go Christian Kirk there. I'm about ready to put Kirk in my lineup. I mean, it's not. Maybe it's not I need that. to see it one week. Yeah. But he has. He he catches that touchdown, or they they throw him that touchdown that he's wide open on, and he's got, you know, seven or eight more points. You're ready to play him. I think. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's probably a twenty thirty yard touchdown. Yeah, right. this is not this this is not a sit start question. No, you it's know, not. This is a, but that but that's kind of what you turned it into is was was that well John Brown's producing right now so I can understand but for me let me get that Christian Kirk. What no, about I feel you, you. you, take, I feel so you. keep him Brown then. No, I, I'll take the asset in Christian Kirk All over right. John Brown. I'm saying it's just yes, John Brown is startable every week and it's not like he's just it's not like it's a fluke and he's a bad player. It's just. No. That I, but, I'll, I'll take the asset. But if I'll I take, could turn what I paid for Brown into Kirk, no doubt. Boom. No All doubt. All right. Good Let's, point. And wait, wait to rephrase that at the very end there, because you're right. Because what whoever's owning John Brown this year has the point of uh, acquisition, the cost of acquisition is minimal, and you just probably paid a late first, early two for Christian Kirk. R O I. Christian Kirk or Geronimo Allison? No, oh, give me Kirk. We talked about it on Patreon last week. I'm selling Brown and I'm selling Geronimo Allison. I mean, I just Casey's trying to upgrade. Yeah, I didn't pay anything for those guys. I don't have a ton of faith in Geronimo Allison long term, and and neither do I. I don't have a ton of faith in uh, John Brown long term. So I'd rather get the uh, the young guy who could develop with Rosen. And, and uh, you know, when we made rankings in the middle of summer, like Kirk was way up ahead of all all of these guys obviously they've played some games now but right uh, yeah john brown's startable every week geronimo allison's very startable every week but I, I want the the long-term asset i don't know what you know geronimo allison and and john brown's value is going to be i definitely feel better about geronimo allison's long-term outlook than i do john brown he's on a one-year deal with sickle sale allison's out of there next year too if they don't re-sign him it's not his second year it's not his Second mm-hmm. year? Well, I'll, I'll double check. But. If he's out of here, well, so he'd be there next year, though? It can't be his fourth year. No, I was, I was thinking he was a rookie last year, but he wasn't high. He doesn't have any extra years on his contract because he obviously was a, a later. No, but there's four built in there, right? I don't think it's an automatic four. Shit. I got it. He's a restricted free agent next year. So, so they'll have him one more year. John Brown, you know, on the one-year deal, whatever. I, I'll still take Kirk. I'll take I'll take Geronimo. And I don't know what the Kirk. futures there are. I'll take the future with Rosen. That's fair. What about you, Big Co? You gonna you gonna cash in Geronimo for some Kirk? Well, I like what Casey said there. You, again, same. My answer same as last question. I'll, I'll take the asset. That's what, when we were doing the mock it up before. You, well, no, that the uh, when we were doing the mock drafts, the start mock startups. Uh, going into the season there we were talking about that same type of thing you take your chris godwins and those types of guys and and you put them on your bench and wet well chris godwin's been startable since week one but you couldn't have really seen that coming with all those players nobody fitzy threw for 400 yards it's been three weeks startable ago. but it's been it's been pull your hair out startable. sustainable startable well exactly because it was 400 yards three year, weeks in a row and actually nobody in the history of football has ever done that so ritzy fitzy did that and but the you know that was the point is you, those types of guys your Christian Kirks and all those, you put those guys on your bench as assets for the future, and then you plug in the John Browns and the Geronimo Allisons and th- that type of stuff. So, yes, you you trade if if there's any of that, if it is if it's anywhere close to possible to trade um, those types of players for a Christian Kirk forward looking asset, I'm down. All right, Nelson Aguilar, Christian Kirk. Um, give me Kirk. It's a toughie. I think it's a little more toughy just because uh, Aguilar has has some draft capital and he obviously played very well with Wentz last year. And we haven't seen uh, uh, the full Eagles yet. Wentz just got back in there and then Alshon just got back in there. And this week the yips are back. The yips are back. So um, I could go I could go with Kirk, too. I don't think if there was a rookie draft this year it, where a free agent draft, if if. Um, Alshon, if, if Nelson Aguilar was in the rookie free agency draft, I don't think you're taking him over Kirk going into the season. So No, and you and you weren't in the offseason 
I'm pretty sure that Kirk was going in front of Nelson Aguilar in most drafts. Um, I agree with that. You got, you got Alshon coming back. Obviously, you had Foles the first week, couple weeks of the season. Nelson Aguilar, I've, I've been a huge... Not, let's not get this twisted. I've been a huge Nelson Aguilar proponent. I like Nelson. I think he's a good player. I stuck by him when he had the yips. If I, he was getting open, if he yeah, could just did. catch the ball, he'd yeah, be you fine. Did. You did. You stuck by him. But now people have somehow come to the conclusion that he's a number one receiver for the Eagles. And I heard that all off season about how, oh, well, why would I take Alshon when I can take Nelson Aguilar X amount of rounds later? Well, you're taking Alshon because there's potential stud number oneness with Alshon and you saw that immediately with his yeah. return back to the Eagles offense. Now uh, Aguilar was playing with Foles for some of that time but he did play with uh, a game with Adam with Wentz and it just I mean it hasn't been great. He's not for the Nelson number Aguilar. one. He's not just, what you were seeing one. out of Alshon is completely different what you were seeing out of uh, Aguilar. Aguilar. Completely agree. Alshon and, comes in there for right away seven for 80 in a touch or something like that. 26 points. And he's going to be at the, probably around the same spot you drafted him last year, if not further back, because I don't know how great this season's really been for Aguilar, right? really. And then when you wanted to get down to it, the, the Eagles were scoring so many points that Aguilar's was being propped up by these touchdowns um, yes. in, in most of the season last year, which is fine. I know the Eagles are typically going to score points, but I, I just, I think, I don't think that it takes much for Aguilar to stay where he is or drop further back, even if he has a decent season. And I think Kirk's going to just continue to more f- move forward as the season goes and he gets on the field and people see him a little more and his name is in some more people's mouths. I agree with so that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going Christian Kirk. It was actually eight for 100 in a touch for Alshon Jeffrey and, and, and piggyback. It was overtime. Right. That's true. It doesn't but, matter. Stats are still stats. Well, yeah. 12, they do they lie. Don't lie. If only like, they do. 12 targets, five catches for 22 yards for Aguilar, and we saw a handful of those catches, t- drops, were near the line of scrimmage that weren't really great plays for Had Nelson. Downfield he were, did have some downfield yeah. ones that were costly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just one of those things where I completely agree with Casey. Going forward if, with and Zach, Don't get it twisted. I like Aguilar on my squad. Yes, Yes, but with with the with the ex with the running back situation they got going on there with actually maybe a little bit better trio or even whatever the word for quadruple set of running backs would be quartet maybe mm, uh, solid effort. the solid quartet over there for running backs and Zach Ertz <laughs> and Alshon and Jordan Matthews back in the fold I, maybe the volume that was there for Nelson Aguilar and the big play touchdowns might not necessarily be adding up to his value growing at, at the type of pace that Kirk would. So I agree with Casey on all that. All right, let's keep moving along. Christian Kirk or Tyler Lockett? You want this one? That's a toughie. Um, Love what I see out of Lockett right now. He's you gotta like, looking strong. Yeah, like what you see out of Lockett. And now um, with a couple drops, the probably some maybe some bad antics on the sideline or in the meeting rooms that coaches are talking about. Brandon Marshall's might be getting swapped out of there so that's uh that's not great for for b marsh but good for lockett um yeah I, I saw lockett come into this game where a game where doug baldwin was back and seemed to be fairly healthy and was getting led the team in targets lockett was right there behind him doing basically the same thing he's done all year what i really like about lockett is that his awareness on the field when the, when it's it's at the end of the half or end of the game and he makes a big catch which he makes third down conversions he comes up huge for this team when they need him he's always like ready to get to the line of scrimmage you never see him like oh i just made a first down let me run 10 yards up and (laughs) point down on the first because i made a first down like nah bo the clock's running let's go he's just right back to the line of scrimmage. i like that on it ready to go if what you need to be liking about lockett is russell wilson needs somebody to throw to it's true the tight ends haven't done it disley just blew his leg off and the running backs are not exactly lining up to catch a ton of passes so even with Baldwin back, that Baldwin back, it's got to help him. It's just, it's got to help keep the drive alive and move the ball down the field. Cause let's face it, the Seahawks offense hasn't exactly been tearing it up. Russell Wilson has been letting you down borderline benchable, finding better quarterbacks out there these days in this pass happy league. So you got to like what you see down a locket. And for me, I, I, that's probably getting closer to a toss up, um, 50, 50 ball there, uh, with locket coming back around tied to a Russell Wilson. Who's, you know, both of them not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, I, 
I think we you, you guys talked about Baldwin a little bit coming back, and I think I think in that situation, I know some people don't like to talk about how when somebody comes back, it makes another player better, and because how could it? Because there's less volume for that player. But well, I, now Patrick Peterson has somebody else to worry about. Well, I just I do think in this situation with Baldwin being back on the field, it definitely helps Tyler lock it out. Yeah. Um, so. It, it is it is a little tough for me. I, I, I always go back to the Tyler Lockett that there is a cult following for Tyler Lockett. So I think there is a good market for Tyler Lockett. Seems uh, like there's a cult, cult following for Kirk, too. Well, well, sure. But I mean, it just it wasn't it didn't get to the point of where the oh, Lockett, Tyler Lockett, the Lockett to a B comparisons were happening a, a year or two ago. And then health and all that other stuff didn't work out for him. But well, Christian Kirk didn't have that. He wasn't he didn't have that Matt Harmon reception. Perception. Right. Right. Yeah. He, well, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. So, but. I, I still don't think you're to the point where you could get a first for for Lockett, and I think Kirk could still get you a first, even though having not done anything. And I think the same thing talking about Aguilar. That's a fair of enough saying point. that you know nobody's hey, giving you a first for Aguilar, right? And, and nobody's giving you a first for Lockett yet. You're so right. I think, I think, uh, I think I'm sticking with Kirk here. Although I do like what I've seen from Tyler Lockett right now. Obviously, you're way more excited about most of these guys in your lineup than Kirk, Kirk. right now. So there's the quandary, but. Yeah, uh, dynasty wise, I, I think I want I want I want my Kirk. I like that. One last thing on um, uh, Tyler Lockett here before we go is week one he had caught three out of four targets for a touch. Week two, five out of seven for a touch. Week three, four out of six for a touch. And last week, five out of six. It's not like the ball sailing all around him. You know what I mean? If if Russell's throwing it near him, he's catching it. So you got. I like that. He's coming up with it. He looks great, um, and he did sign a three-year deal. Uh, in That's the closest one for me so, so far. Yep, agreed. I, I have Tyler Lockett on my team. I don't know if I would send out that trade offer I, I, to get Kirk right now. I, well, any of these guys, if you need them right, right now, you're probably not sending that trade offer out because it's just going to cripple you if for you the need next em. couple of weeks. Yes, but you are in bad shape if you need to have. I mean, I had we had Tyler Lockett in a, in a lineup this week with a you know twelve man team with two flexes. You know, it's if you don't have. The ru- that's what i'm talking if you, about if you don't I have mean, the starter starting positions it's hard to move any of these guys we've been talking about really mm-hmm. but i like way i like the way casey phrased that and that's really um i didn't i didn't come up with it to say it but that's a lot that's how i i try to judge my trade deals who not not that i'm not here to have fun myself either and and but i i will se- i will sell a guy for a guy if i think that you Christian Kirk could get you a first round pick. Tyler Lockett's probably not going to do it. Aguilar is definitely not going to do it. That's that's a good way to think about it. We it's and, and that's, that's not the end all be all. No, but, but that's that's your that's your good but that's your good way to bring it back to a baseline judgment call because in, especially like every every trade talk anytime you're talking when we do, trade calculator when we try buy sell when we talk about buy sell hold or this kind of game right here that Jay Wayne's got us playing. It, every type of potential trade is always so circumstantial to the roster that when you get into this, you basically have to equate them to draft picks because you don't know anything else. Mm-hmm. So I like what Casey said there is Tyler Lockett will be getting close to getting that Colt following. Find, maybe somebody will start to scratch their head about a first round pick, but Christian Kirk is still, you know, he, he was, he was, he might've been one, seven, one, eight, one, nine you know, on easily in somebody's rookie draft. He could have been somebody's, top receiver yeah on that's fair that's fair i guess i could i guess i could make this deal what else you got for us i could take it one more let's take it to another tyler Uh we just put tyler lockett up against uh christian kirk Uh uh-oh how about tyler boy uh-oh so far kirk's won every one of these kirk's undefeated well we talked four no we we talked about uh we did buy sell hold on the patreon last week because we ran out of time and we talked about john brown and we talked about geronimo allison we also talked about Tyler Boyd. Out of those guys, Boyd was the only one that I'm not selling. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, we didn't come out and salute the Tyler Boyd flag. Previous years, we were all over the Tyler Boyd flag. We kind of let it uh, sail at half mast there for a little while. <laughs> now it is back to full, it's full mass. on flying and <laughs> it's full mass. Full mass. What with what Bill Lazor is doing and with what. Andy Dalton's doing right now and what I liked about Tyler Boyd is coming to fruition out on the field right now so I would have a tough time like I'm I, I think Tyler Boyd right now is fetching some first round picks from some no people. doubt about it so no diggity th- this I would just said Lockett was the closest this for me is is tossing two balls up in the air and and 
Uh, you know, I don't I don't really know which one I want, I guess, right now, because I like the long term outlook of Tyler Boyd and what's going on. And I like I, I, man, I think I got to go Tyler Boyd here uh, for me. It's Tyler Boyd. And I'm and because I can start very, him right now and feel confident about it. Yes. And I like the long term outlook is, is basically where yeah. I was going. Well, Tyler Boyd is uh, I've Casey. Casey's a huge Christian Kirk guy and and. As we all are, but Casey's definitely a bigger Christian Kirk guy than I am. So I, I can probably – he and I were both leading the charge for um, Tyler Boyd. So I think I can probably slip back into the Tyler Boyd a little easier than he can there. Still can, only 24, Tyler Boyd is. and Yeah, and, you know, A.J. Green is an absolute monster stud. Had some issues with staying healthy lately. Obviously, you got the horrible injury to Tyler Eifert uh, this – this game against the Falcons here so he's out and obviously ain't coming back so that take that that puts more targets on his plate and we've seen it a few weeks in a row obviously the biggest thing here for me is don't forget that all of this Tyler Boyd stuff has really started to happen not that it wasn't happening in the first two weeks but this big stuff has happened without Joe Mixon in the lineup and maybe there's a lot more handoffs coming for that Bengals but they've seen a little bit better offensive line this year and I, maybe, I don't think it's a coincidence you see a little bit better offensive line and the weapons are fairly healthy outside of the Tyler Eifert right now but you see a better um, quarterback see Andy Dalton playing better than he did last year I don't think that's there's never any coincidence when the offensive line plays better and the quarterback's not running for his life mm-hmm. every play now sure you still have some down the stretch of that game you have those aggravating Andy Dalton plays where he just doesn't have that pocket awareness to get out of Vic Beasley's way you know he's coming mm-hmm. they slide up a little bit and stop getting your arm hacked a couple plays in a row but he's just upset because he had money on him they still covered. <laughs> they got he got he threw it to AJ and they they won the game. Much less covered plus six. Mm. Love it, love it. They had it, but he definitely sweat. He made me sweat. I didn't like that. Didn't need the sweat. But uh, yeah, I'm Tyler Boyd for sure. With the three games over twenty points, I mean, I got to give the nod to, to Tyler Boyd here. I guess, and then it's not to say that Allison and and all those other players we named haven't been producing and yeah, all that. Other not stuff, quite like this. I like what I've been seeing from Tyler Boyd in this offense. All right, let's do one more. Load it up one more time for real, for real. It's the last one. Promise. Tyler Boyd, not Tyler Boyd. We just talked about him. <laughs> Christian Kirk or Mike Dub Williams. Who? Mm. Mike Williams. Gotcha. Mike Dub. Dub is short for W, uh-huh. which is the first letter of his last name. Mm-hmm. Mike Dub. Mm. This is a sticky one. I just... I, I'm going to try not to be a homer here. I'll let you lead off here, I guess. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the guy in the orange Clemson shorts and the Clemson t-shirt, will he please stand up? Also have an orange hat. Don't forget that. Uh, <laughs> I got to take Mike Williams over Christian Kirk. And, and it's a guy we haven't talked about a lot, and at some point I would like to talk about some Mike Williams because there's a ton of hate out there for him. I don't want to open up that box right now. Is there? There's, there always has been. Well, yeah, for sure. Matt Kelly is leading the charge oh, on just that tons thing. of people about how unathletic he is and how he's just a bum and all this other stuff well as soon as matt kelly comes out and puts his flag on someone being really bad then a bunch of cronies jump on top and then it changes twitter sphere and <laughs> cronies it's, it's uh or buzzards or minions or whatever yeah, the meaning name you want to call yourself from being a fan of his uh I mean, but but look what he's done this season. You're seeing what he was drafted at f- to do, which is score touchdowns. And I know, I know you let you down this past week. Um, who the the, the uh, Chargers play? The Niners. The Niners gave him everything they could handle. <laughs> gave him everything they could handle. Had him on the ropes. Probably should have won that game. Uh, but but what you see, Mike Williams do? He's out there scoring touchdowns. I think he's got. Has he got three already this year? Sure, I think so. Uh, two in one game, and and you just see him going up in the end zone and coming down with the ball. And when you got and, and he was he's a top ten pick in the NFL. I think he was seventh, and and they're finally getting what they what they basically paid for, which is a guy who could score touchdowns. So, not that I don't think Christian Kirk could score touchdowns, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna swing for the fence here with with this massive double digit touchdown scoring potential. So if I don't take Mike Williams here, I'm basically right now at this point rating Tyler Boyd over Mike Williams. Yeah, because I, I just took because uh, I just took Tyler Boyd right instead of Christian Kirk. And when I was doing my preseason 
kind of rankings of figuring things out. This was, you know, all these rookies, whoever it was, and Mike Williams were always a tough kind of toss up because Placement. one, you hadn't seen a whole lot, whole lot of Mike Williams, mm-hmm. um, very little until but, he started but, making flashes in the preseason. But you I hadn't like seen anything, right? Though. But I like, I always liked the prospect of Mike Williams, even though a lot of people didn't. He's a bigger bodied guy. Alshon Jeffrey kind of player uses that frame well, knows how to use what he's got. I think he's just is a is a has the innate ability to play the position. He is the separation, as right. we like to say, His body. with some of these bigger bodied guys mm-hmm. um, who don't necessarily need to run away from everybody. He knows how to use that frame. He's not afraid um, of contact. And you've seen that in this in the in this season. You've seen him in in situations where balls are placed. In, in good positions, he knows how to box people out, use the, use the long arms and all that stuff. This is tough for me. Basically, I think I'm, I'm trading essentially what you were last year as your, you know, anywhere from 1-9 to one twelve in your Mike Williams in your fa- rookie drafts to anywhere of Kirk being in the same uh, vicinity this and year. Mike would have been higher had he not hurt his back so early, I think. M- maybe. Maybe I think a lot of people just didn't like the athletic profile of what Mike Williams was putting out there, pushing him down the board. So in my opinion, I think you're trading kind of last year's two years ago's pick for this year's kind of pick. So yeah. I think it's almost it's kind of a stalemate here for me. Uh, and I, about, it's crazy that I just <clears throat> took Tyler Boyd over both of these guys. And now I'm saying that they're kind of a stalemate. <laughs> so I, it's I, just uh, there's nothing wrong with just being like, you know what? Tyler Boyd's just been awesome. And 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 I, fifteen targets in a game and ten targets in the game before that, uh, nine targets will do that. Uh, you know, and you got to catch them and you got to do something with them. But Tyler Boyd's done it. I'll take Mike Williams over Christian Kirk. I'm, I've maybe down the line, the target ball it'll be one of those Mike Evans versus Keenan Allen. Uh, those two guys would you know the two youngsters would love to be in their conversation. But maybe down the line you'll have. The big body Mike Williams that scored in touchdowns, and you'll have Christian Kirk crushing receptions, and then probably get to the same point totals in different ways in a Marvin mm-hmm. Jones, Golden Tate esque type fashion. Right. Um, but I can see, if, you know, let's say short term, the next three years, if Philip Rivers stays playing, then I can see the Philip Rivers throws touchdowns. He's thrown 30, around 30 a year for 10 straight years or something like that. I could see. Mike Williams coming up with six to ten touchdowns are fluky. Six to ten touchdowns for the next. He's a double digit guy. Yeah, if he, he, if he especially if he becomes more of the guy. Yeah, and I think what I what I what makes it even more of a stalemate for me is like just like you said, like they can come up with their totals in different ways. Right, and I think they're both kind of trending towards the line of being the guy on their team at some point. Yeah, um, both with good players in front of them. Obviously, Larry's a lot closer to the end of things than. Uh, Keenan Allen is yeah sure, um, but I mean maybe not Keenan Allen rupture spleen. But you got to you got to produce you got you got the higher ceiling of the Chargers offense with Philip Rivers, and you got you know Rosen, who's a younger Next cat year who's could coming be, along. It could be you know saying that the Cardinals offense is up there with the top producers, and you know Absolutely you, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't no, you don't. And Rivers could say I'm but having my twenty ninth ch- kid, so I'm I'm going to stay home. This is I've, all true. <laughs> But something's got to change for – something fundamentally has to change. And we saw just a teeny bit, obviously, the quarterback change, but a teeny bit of, hey, let's get – let's not forget that our running back is top two or three in the league uh, for the Cardinals. But they got a, they brought in a defensive-minded coach, and they brought Same in – Same with the Chargers, though. Mike McCoy, who just doesn't – do, Could you know, be fireable. Yeah, he's a mid – yeah, he got fired last year and halfway through the season. So um, – We'll see how we'll see how uh, all goes, we can but, hope is that the Cardinals fire their offensive coordinator. That's always a shot of life halfway through the season. <laughs> Whoever does it, Bill Lazor, as true. we just mentioned with Tyler Boyd and, and Andy yeah. Dalton, Bengals got better last year, a lot better. You know, gave a shot of life to that offense, much like these quarterbacks coming in gave a shot of life to their offenses in these past weeks. And we've points. seen it with the Ravens, uh, and, and they love firing a coordinator halfway through the season and going to the Super Bowl. It happens. So, one more thing, and take it for what it's worth, is for uh, my defense of Mike Williams over Christian Kirk here would be off the field. Uh, I know from being a Clemson homer, I know everything about Mike Williams. I know he's a stand-up dude. He's I own humble. Mike Williams. He's just humble. No, I don't know Mike Williams. <laughs> I know Mike Williams. We text. <laughs> I have him on my fantasy team. He's huge. He's tremendous. 
Uh, he's a great dude. He's a hard worker. He's humble. He's a non diva at the wide res- at the diva position. Um, we don't gonna, think Christian Kirk is any of those things. Well, Christian Kirk did get arrested for like public to damaging a property after he got drafted. And he so did. if you're going to get That's arrested true. for jerking around in public, jerking, jerking around. around, maybe you could rephrase that. <laughs> messing after around. you get drafted, <laughs> messing around. He was being a jerk. I think this was a. I think this was a. <laughs> this was this was at the. Um, Whatever the golf tournament is in Phoenix, yeah, well, yeah. That's, that's the, the rowdiest the golf tournament. Where you get hammered, and whatever. Gallop people. You just get drafted sure. in the second round, and then you're gonna go and get arrested. I, like I'm not trying to hold that against Christian Kirk too much. I mean, I was still willing to draft him, and I still took him over a bunch of players. There's here. a good chance if I'm Christian Kirk, I'm getting arrested at that golf tournament. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just it just that that's a bonehead move, and it's never gonna. And, and, and there's something like that. That the only thing is that something like that could happen in the future. And Mike, I know it's never yeah, gonna it happen, happen with to Mike anybody. Doug. Well, you can you can you you raise me character. I'll raise you some neck and back is- issues that could Ooh. help cancel out some. And I and I don't I don't ever I hardly ever weighs into anything that I'm yeah. gonna say. But if we're gonna talk about it, yeah. I know Mike Williams is a very good guy. He's got a diploma from throw Clemson. some chips in the middle of the table there. Uh, but. But uh, got his diploma. You like that? <laughs> a little, uh, little inside joke jab there. But you you raise me character. I'm going with that's there's, fair. There's some some back injury, some risk of a risky spot on people's bodies with yeah. Mike Williams. Well, that's nobody fair. well nobody wants to hear neck and back. Yeah, unless you're that that rap that song. Yeah, let's my <laughs> neck. Let's let's get out of here before you start singing a rap song. <laughs> Yeah, right, I, I think can't we, sing or rap, so that's we've, not going to play. Out I well. think we've officially exhausted the Cardinals. Yeah, good, good for Larry Fitz here. Gets a nice little uptick. You're not as scared to start him. Chad Williams, uh, definitely somebody I'd be fishing around for. Just Ricky like Seals we were, Jones, sure. Ricky Looking Seals to see Jones. him come alive. Th- that's a, a good stab. But Chad Williams being a guy who Larry's maybe on the way out. They seem to kind of like this guy, Chad Williams. I think you could go fishing around. For, for cheap for for some Chad Williams obviously he just caught a touchdown oh he's still uh, this very, past very week cheap. but Probably I mean, you, could throw, wires. you could throw a third or, or or a fourth at somebody and see if you can't put him on your team for later I like that they've been holding him for a year and a quarter now not seeing anything so you could probably get him maybe for a third but I definitely go fishing see if he's out there on offense some is on the on the up definitely all right let's take a quick break and we'll be back with more married to the game crispy that was a good one strong crack revelry must be packaging their beers a little tighter (laughs) Eh, yeah sure why not (laughs) (laughs) shout out to revelry for uh moving to savannah georgia so if you're listening in the savannah georgia area they're just starting their uh endeavor in 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 georgia so that's pretty exciting for them yeah hit them up uh if you're in charleston 10 conroy street hit up the hold new barrel aged sour Specialty beer place called The Hold. It's a lot of specialty beers if you're that kind of connoisseur. Woodworking by your boy if you're interested yeah. in something. Go over there. This is Holler true. at me. I got this a sweet true. sweet video coming out about that place Some not too cus- long. Custom woodworking going on. Um, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty if you feel so inclined. Definitely go to YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. We're uh, going live every Sunday answering sit start questions. If, you, if you're subscribed and you hit the little notification bell, Next to the subscription button, you'll get notified anytime we go live or put out a new video. So just more ways for you guys to get in contact with us. Um, we're going to finish up the rest of this free show here. We're going to get into some uh, some question marks about guys that have been out of, out for a little while and are coming back. So we're gonna we're gonna delve into some of that. Um, we're gonna once we get done with this show, we're gonna head over to Patreon and put out our uh, exclusive Patreon only show. Um, get into some uh, listener questions and some. Um, Maybe some Tennessee Titans. We got the, who, I don't know who much, knows what we're going to do. I don't know how much there. time we'll have. Yeah, uh, might go to Bed Bath Beyond. Yeah, um, but knows? definitely, if you guys aren't a, a Patreon, cash uh, in some gift cards. You can you can find a link from our website, theffdynasty.com, or you can go straight over to patreon.com slash theffdynasty. Um, it's a five dollar holla, so five bucks a month, less yeah. than a coffee that you probably get every single day. Just buy us a coffee once a month. That's all you got to do. There's tons of hours of content on there already. Get your questions answered. Anything you want to talk about, we'll, we'll discuss on, on a show for you. Um, trades, whatever you need. Yep. You know, we, we, we got you over there. That's It's basically our, our way of 
letting you into our little circle and and we'll we'll help you out with with whatever we can right because you just sometimes you need somebody to talk something over with and we want to be that that ear for you and help you out with your with your teams and and your squads kind of like we try to do here on this free show well, let's get into it enough talk enough chit chat let's uh let's talk about a little mark ingram he's making his return this week uh alvin kamara has obviously just been crushing it from a fantasy production standpoint um, we did discuss Mark Ingram last week on the on the Patreon show about what you should maybe be doing with him. Um, let's start off with he's coming back. You've been holding him. Are you putting him right in your lineup right away when he gets back? Absolutely. Mark Ingram? Right. Sure. Must start. Must. I don't think you're going to see <clears throat> what what the end result of this season will be w- the first week he's back. Like, I don't... I'm not sure you're going to see. I think you're going to see a good amount of carries in Mark Ingram's uh, under Mark Ingram's belt by the time the season uh, rolls forward. I'm 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 going to say 10, 12. You'll see in this first game back with with a couple of, couple catches, of catches in there. So I don't see any reason. I mean, Kamara's been awesome. There is right nothing short of he has been absolutely ridiculous. You can thank him later for everything he's done for you this year mm. if you have him. Um, you know, I I was concerned coming into this season about what he was going to do and if it was sustainable. And the pace he's on right now is probably not sustainable. And then you get Mark Ingram coming back, and maybe you see a, a slight dip in in what Kamara has been doing. But he's so efficient with his touches, and and what he does through the air is really is is the special part about what Mark Ingram or uh, Alvin Kamara is giving you yeah. week in week out i mean he's it's it's almost it's it's unfair he's catching the ball with with so much space in front of him and and then he's already a guy who's very hard to bring down yeah um it's it's, it's just saints, a really saints backfield x's and o's but uh, what the thing that i thought you know that you were gonna you have seen uh kamara struggle with was was kind of the goal line work and he's been getting some goal line work so even the games where you were like "Mm, i had this guy finally contained and he's not going to absolutely kill me where there's no chance i can win this week he's been getting those carries from the two the three inside the five or ten and i do think some of that shifts now back to ingram even though kamara's been just fine most times I can, doing so. I completely agree with that. I think the Saints would rather have Ingram taking those handoffs anyway. Just and if to they want to be who they fresh. if they want to be who they who everyone projected them to be before the seasons, the Saints that is, I think you do need to help let let Ingram help shoulder right. the load. Uh, right along the same idea there. They're three and one, but it could uh, give you such a different until, identity when you and, got a guy like Ingram who can and, punch you in the face. Until they got to play against Eli Manning, their defense looked horrible. Absolutely horrible to start the year. So maybe together with you know Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara, maybe they still put up crazy numbers, both of them, because their defense isn't going to get to play against Eli Manning every week. Um, You're I've, able to slow the games down once Ingram comes into pace. Like that's true. Uh, I, I got Michael a couple, Thomas was on pace for 200 receptions before right, this last game. Right, right, no doubt. And His I, hands I got, are going to fall. I off. got a couple. I got a, I got two or three teams I can think of off the top of my head where a Mark Ingram's not a must start this week back. Like if you got a couple of really good running backs and you don't have to put him in your lineup. Good for you. Like, sure. if you got Mark Ingram coming back and he's not a must start for your team, fantastic. But I got the majority of my teams, I don't have him on. But the one team that I do have him on, it's like I've been waiting on this guy for weeks. Right. I'm still in the playoff hunt, and that's fantastic. But here comes Mark Ingram, and great. Of course, I got Le'Veon Bell out on almost all my teams. It's killing me. So if you got Mark Ingram coming back, good for you. And for me, like, I don't see you'd have to have one of those top eight backs to not I was going to say know, to not have him as a must start I was going to say if you two had, of them you'd you have, have to have Jordan Howard as your second or third running back but he's got to buy this week I so yeah uh, does it right the Bears yeah are the Bears on so that, that's not a good but let's just say theoretically if Jordan Howard was to be playing sure I'm taking Mark Ingram and putting him right over Jordan Howard all right there you go well I think I think it's an interesting discussion to be had I think you know i I came out. We we had a Patreon show. We talked about Alvin Kamara and all that stuff. And you know, I, I I I not that I was ever down on Alvin Kamara. I just wasn't putting him as high as everybody else. But I mean, right now he deserves to be at the top end of every single draft from here on out until further notice. Yeah. I mean, well, what he's doing is ridiculous. And there's these forty burgers spread right. into these first four forties and thirties. It's been stupid. It's Great. outrageous. It's been awesome. 
He's on pace, I think. I did the math for like 140 catches, 1,400 yards, and 20 receiving touchdowns or something yeah. like that, which that'd be like the best wide receiver hit, like season in the history of seasons of yeah. wide receivers, maybe. Uh, so that's obviously, I don't think that's sustainable, but that's that. That's obviously the floor, and I don't think much of that gets affected by Mark Ingram. I do think this helps the defense out with Mark Ingram coming back. Up until this last game, you hadn't seen a ton of rushing production um, he had from Alvin Kamara. He had 29 yards week one, 46 in week two, 66 in week three uh, on 16 carries, which yards per carry, that's not the worst there. It's 4.1, but then last week against the Giants, he gets you 19 for 134, which was really ele- elevated by that. 49 yard scamper he had a useless end. run at the end of the game that really just yeah put yeah up. but i mean you start, you're 18 for 100 without that so that's still really good well you're 18 for you know 130 minus 50 so it's eight oh you just said i thought you said 118 19 for 140 something 134 okay so yeah 84 um 84 and then minus a touchdown right minus a touchdown <laughs> yeah so that was a, that was a that huge was a, play. Yeah, that's still a, having a good play. That's a slap in the face there. to anybody you're playing. Yeah. He went oh. from 34 to 45 points or something like that. Yeah. Or, or 29 to 41 or something, uh, which is pretty crazy. But I, I think I'm excited about having Mark Ingram come back. I'm 0-4 in one league in a dynasty league with Mark Ingram. And, I mean, I'm only two games out of the playoff race right now. Everybody that's in that fifth and sixth spot. Is two and two. That's right. That's that's you know? a good point, Jay Wayne. When you're when you what what depending on what your team looks like right now for your for the playoffs, you don't have to look at that top two and three teams. You got to be looking at that last one or two teams in the playoffs. And really, if you're if you've gotten lucky or unlucky and you're sitting down there and Casey and I, we got one team in the FFPC where we got the best roster in the league, and this week was our first win. We're one and three. Barely got any victory points in the FFPC. And we, we're we not chasing those top teams. We're chasing that last team in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what you're looking for when you're deciding whether your team, your year is shot or not. Well, you're not, you're, there's no catching the 4 0 team if you're 0 and 4. You don't have to. Right. Just catch that last team and sneak in and then just disrupt. Just right. if you if you got a good, solid team, go in there and, and make some hay. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't know. What to, I kind of want to ship them out. I kind of want to keep them. I don't know what to do. But you're plugging him this week. Who's next? I got to plug him in this week for sure in that league. Devontae Freeman looks to be making his return this week off of a knee injury that's knocked him out for several weeks here. What do you do with Devontae Freeman? You plug him. He's, it's not a PED suspension that he's coming off of. He's coming off this knee. I think there's two sides of this tale. Um, we'll start with one, the first side that you just asked. Uh, Freeman, maybe if I'm struggling by weeks or something along those lines, uh, or injury and bye week, maybe I plug him, but I'm really trying my best to not put him in the lineup here. 100% agree, and there's plenty of teams out there that are like, oh, my God, give me Freeman and put him in my line. You know, uh, if you can help it, if you found a way, let's say if I got James White in my RB2 spot, I'm playing James White over Freeman this week. I want to see what's Thursday up Thursday with, with Edelman back? Sure, plug okay. him. Oh, right. yeah. that That's, I mean, you know, I, if you've been playing James White before last year, last week's thirty pointer, you needed him. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously scores thirty points, and you you know you're like, oh yeah, see, I told you James White. But the first couple of weeks, it was only fourteen, and he just gets you by. What if he got like uh, Crowell or a, or Powell in in there? I don't know who the Jets have this week offhand, but like Jets have I, the Jets have mm, was it Tennessee? No, it's the Denver. Denver goes to the Jets, so they got a solid defense. Um, Kareem Hunt just ran wild on him. He sucked. Yeah. He hopefully, you hit the window and traded that guy because he's terrible. Right. <laughs> um, I'm I'm benching I'm benching Freeman if I can anywhere and everywhere that I can. I want to see that knee before I put him in. Now, if you got to put him in because it's an emergency situation, I understand. They are playing Pittsburgh, so it should be a pretty playing high Pittsburgh high scoring. Yep. Affair. What if you got Tevin Coleman and Devontae well, Freeman? That's, that was the second part what of the What do you do? That was oh, the second, the other, I, wanted to, the, I wanted to know what was going on with the other part of the second, That was the second part of the equation is what do you do with the Tevin Coleman? And, and I think Tevin Coleman's always been a guy that if you needed him, you could always plug him in even right. if Freeman was healthy. RB2 Maybe they kind of ease him back in here. And I guess if you have them both, who would you play this week? If I had to, I would play Tevin Coleman. 
Uh, but I, at this point, with Freeman coming back, and I don't know enough, I'd rather not. But in this type of shootout, you know the Falcons are going to be trying to chase points because their defense they got is no horrible. defense. This is going to be Absolutely a 40-40 horrible. game. I um, mean, it, it, it sets up to be a 40-40 game for sure, just like the Raiders and the Browns broke out into the high 40s. Um, yeah, so I would, I would play – Coleman over Freeman, rather not play either, but I would you you're gonna want to try to get as many players in this game as you can anyway. But you know, so yes, if Freeman comes back looking good, that's definitely gonna hurt Coleman. But as Casey said, he's his own asset, been RB two and flexible in the past. <laughs> it's a shootout game, so I would have no problem putting Coleman in. Well, I got an Aguilar I could put in Well, over. you saw week one with a healthy both that they were split in series. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, we were kind of joking off air that Devontae Freeman almost helps Tevin Coleman out. Like, because Tevin's been putting up basically the same exact numbers that he has been with Freeman in there. Well, in the week one, they played a charged up returning Super Bowl champ, Philadelphia Eagle, completely Freeman healthy di- defensive front. Freeman should have had plenty of points in the first quarter of that game, but it's hard to do anything against that Eagles front. And the Falcons found out the hard way. All right, fair enough. You got some more? Wizard? Wizard. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't guess we, maybe we don't need to bring up Joe Mixon here. Um, Why not? I'm not sure if he's coming back or not. Oh, well, let's play the what if game. Can't leave Joe Joe Mixon out of the game. Wizard. All right, another guy coming back uh, that, that hasn't been playing all year. Julian Edelman returning Thursday night at home versus the Colts. So you plug in Julian. I've, I mean, I think I think this team desperately needs him. Uh, I mean, perfectly I, said. I just, Team desperately they, needs him. He's going to come back. There's been like, a ton of people uh, saying that he's washed and all this other stuff, which uh, may, maybe he isn't quite the Julian Edelman that we once knew, but there's there still should be plenty of volume in his direction, and he should be able to get you Brady uh, have a nice PPR floor. Brady with what's can't going wait on. to throw to Scott. Above. Hogan can't wait to get the hell out of the slot and move back to his normal position and just take a lot of pressure off everybody else. You're finally seeing Sony Michelle in this last game. I mean, they just obliterated the Dolphins. Sure. You saw him kind of take a step forward and be kind of a lead dog running back. The person that hurts maybe Edelman coming back the most is, is a James White in this situation with just that great PPR floor. I don't think there's any reason to be pulling James White from your lineups. Well, no, but you've seen, I mean, soon, a, each and every snap, James White's out there playing wide receiver if he's right. not in the backfield. So, yeah, you bring in a J- Julian Edelman and it just gives them what it gives them a, a wide receiver, the best one they got. So, the answer for me is if I have him, obviously, if I have a, just like you were saying with the running backs with Ingram, if you have a stacked uh, lineup here where, you know, you, there's no way that, that you've been floating on cloud nine without him. Sure. Then, you, you know, you're Good not, for you. you're not you fighting. Just, you're not fighting to get him in the lineup. But if you're, double, if you're in a kind of double flex situation or three three wide receiver start and your third wide receiver isn't hasn't been great uh, and it's PPR. I mean, this is a guy that I don't see any reason not to throw him right back in the lineup. I know uh, Zach Reed of the Dynasty Dummies has been a big uh, proponent of, of Julian Edelman and trying to uh, get him on your teams through this period of yes, of good call him. by Zach, great call uh, by Zach, I, I, absolutely, hundred percent. And I, I'm, I'm in. There's not a whole lot of guys that like I didn't fire. I was telling everybody in the sit starts, don't don't play Alshon Jeffrey this week if he blows sure. up on your bench. Great, don't play Doug Baldwin this week if he blows up on your bench. Great, yeah. Tommy and Edelman, he's a, it's a PED suspension, right? It's not exactly. Exactly. That's what that's what I was about to say. I was I'm right there with you. Yeah. Oh, it's getting close to a we, meatloaf. You were sitting, meatloaf. meatloaf. You were sitting now, Sean, to see what happened, and you couldn't have been happier about seeing him come out and dominate. And there you go. But yes, it's not an injury for Edelman. It's the suspension he went and got on some good stuff, and he's probably coming in jacked up, ready to go. Hopefully, um, he doubled I, down on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hope he got another another round in. I'm plugging in Edelman. Right after and you get popped, you might as well just. Take Zero hesitation. Round. And I forgot to say this real quick about Mark Ingram. Did y'all see he met the team at the airport. This yeah. man is jacked up, ready to go. I got no hesitations putting in Mark Ingram and Julian Edelman. Like, did you need to meet us at the airport? Ah, good for him. Good for He's him. He's been in the doghouse for yeah. so long. He yeah. probably brought him donuts. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Well, if he showed up with one of the coach's wives, that's bad. Oh. Yeah. But the windows were tinted. The <laughs> windows hilarious. were tinted. You couldn't even see her in the car. The windows yeah. were tinted. A presidential tint. <laughs> yeah. Good tent job. <laughs> Great tent job. Mark Ingram and coaches wives goes back paid really extra. far on paid this, extra uh, for that. He got shunned podcast. for a while for that. Yeah, it's a long run. Last year unshunned. Inside joke. Yep. Needed him. Who's next? Wife. Maybe they got divorced or something. 
And they let Mark Ingram ride last year, and that's what we're hoping and expecting to happen this year. I want to say that, Jay Wayne, we, we used meet, some meatloaf clips here and there. We've been, uh, since we started this podcast, we've every year we've done a mid-season meatloaf, and that's how I define my seasons. It's what happened pre-meatloaf, <laughs> what happened post-meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> meatloaf is a huge fantasy football guy. If you haven't seen or heard any of the clips of him talking about his fantasy football addiction or his love for fantasy football, yeah. that's what spawned this. Look right. for that mid-season of the fantasy game. football season. We do it every year. We just crush all the breaks, all the intros, everything with meatloaf. We give you some fun meatloaf facts, Yeah, and I can't wait for it. We're, we're a quarter of the way to Pre meatloaf. Pre-meatloaf, post-meatloaf. <laughs> the Pete Meatloaf can't even play in any Hollywood fantasy football leagues because he's won them all. Right, he's been banished. Because <laughs> <laughs> he won them all. <laughs> all right, well, yeah, that's that's exciting. We're halfway to midseason Meatloaf. We Week sure four are. review here. So, all right, uh, shall we move on? Yeah. All right, so if Joe Mixon comes back this week, are you going to play him? I, I mean, I, I guess so. I, I don't know. I well, I just said I'm not playing Freeman. If if the if the Bengals deem him healthy enough to play, I mean, even when he was in there with that banged up knee yeah. coming into that, he was he was still tell looking. Was he was hurt. still looking pretty good. The, the Bengals aren't in a terrible situation, so I don't know why they would That's, rush him back. And and Big Co alluded to that at, off air. So, I, I guess I I don't know. Here, here, here I feel I feel like the Bengals are three and one. And Giovanni's been good enough to help them out. Obviously, the Falcons' defense was bad enough to give them the game. Um, if yes, if the Bengals say that that Mixon's healthy enough to play for them, I think then you start him because I don't think he. I don't think they play him if he's not ready. I don't think that they're three and one. Don't necess, not that they don't need him, but Gio's been great. And I don't think they bring him back unless he's solid. He's to me feels different than Devonte Freeman, and I think it, it, it wouldn't surprise like me at all is, if they didn't play him another week. Right? It feels like Devonte Freeman's injury was like almost carried over from year to the, year the previous season. Yeah, because he because he opted not to have surgery. Right. And the first time he everything's cool in the preseason when you're not really doing anything. Everything's cool when Greg Olson's foot's okay, and then he goes out there and he play and he's playing against real competition. And you're in between, and it matters. As soon as it matters, you do right. things a little bit higher level. And as soon as it mattered, Devonte Freeman knee got bust up. I, I think. If you, I just struggle because Geo's been pretty good in this offense. This offense has been pretty good, and and even if Mixon does get the start, maybe maybe they they mix a, a lot more Geo in to just ease him back in. So I struggle I a little bit with the Mixon, even though like uh, when the first question gets posed to me, I'm like, yeah, play Mixon. Right. No, I see that argument about Geo was good enough to come in, and a lot of people are trying to. I I, I would imagine that the argument's going going to go around a fair amount this week about how Geo was so good and he needs to stay relevant, which he wasn't when Mixon was right. in there. Right. It's the same Geo, and then yeah. when he was there, it's like they don't when, know that what happened last year. Right. That he crushed it down the stretch. When Mixon was healthy, Geo Geo was irrelevant and didn't even look like Gio right. for whatever reason. Now he's been unhealthy and Gio's been good. So it's just this, quite the quandary. Well, they're at home against the Dolphins who just got shellacked and they they might have their manhood tested because they were 3-0, and feeling good. And, and then, you know, it was a division rivalry. The Patriots beat them up like the, you know, little tiny brother. But maybe the Dolphins come back over here and try to stand up. But I think the Bengals got it rolling. And if they say he's ready to play, I, I wouldn't mind playing him. Yeah, uh, I, it wouldn't I surprise I me if they – I don't think they need to play him to beat the Dolphins at home. I agree, but that the back. I, I agree. The, if he's if he's if they say if they deem him ready, I guess I guess I guess I would be okay with playing Mixon. I think there's enough PPR floor to boost him up enough to feel fairly confident with him. And I mean, he looked like one of the better backs in the league when he was out there. He was truck sticking people. I mean, he's he's quick and patient, powerful, elusive. He's got so, it all, and he sure. can, he's a catch. Which I, this is which is why like you're you're having a good season. I'm not sure why you would want to rush this guy back. Completely agree. And you don't have a defense. Completely unnecessary to bring him back early. I mean, I think that he did get that injury midway through the the last game that he played, and they had him finish the game out. Right. I mean, well, they, he that, looked fine. It didn't look like he was hurt because he left the first half of the knee injury. It's not like a, it wasn't a sprain this or a sprain that. It's something. Well, I'm not a doctor, but they, but they just went in to take a little bone fragment. And something, a little chip of something, and they were saying, 
Uh, my boy Sigmund Bloom's podcast had the doctor came on there and said he equated it to like having a rock in your shoe. If you're running down the road and that rock gets right up underneath your uh, the ball of your foot, it's going to bother you. You take your shoe off and you knock it out. But if that rock kind of finds its way in the corner, it doesn't bother you. So that's kind of yeah one of those things. You don't need four weeks to recover after you knock that rock out of there, though. But right. Well, like Casey said, though, they don't. This is this is the this is the the future of their offense in the backfield is mixing. He's come in and done everything he needed to do. We, you know, had the talent to go a lot higher in the draft, and all the problems that happened with him in college that fell only down to the second round because he's that good. Mm -hmm. And the Bengals needed him and took that chance. And I completely agree with Casey. I don't think they should play him unless he's a hundred percent. That's why if they do play him, I would imagine that the Cincinnati Bengals know enough to say if he's good, he's good. All right. I like that. I like that uh, logic, solid logic. Uh, let's wrap this up. We got one more guy just to name drop here. Uh, Robert, the gun show turban, mm. is also coming back from PED suspension. His pipes are ready to roll. If somebody needs a ru- what's the status of Marlon Mack? He's just still limited. And he was limited all last week. Didn't and play. He was inactive. Yeah. He's limited to start this week. You don't really know. I mean, I'm not excited about picking up Turbin and plugging him, per se, but I mean... No, but... (coughs) I would definitely be looking at picking him up. Right. If you could, if you uh, got the space. 100%. I mean, this is is an offense that doesn't have any sort of running back identity right now. They they forced Mac again like right. they, they did the opposite of what we think the Bengals should do or the Falcons should do. They forced Mac back for no reason. He was out within a half of that exactly. game that he came back. He had a couple of good runs in that game, but just wasn't right. Like he's an explosive guy. The hamstring has to explosion. be right. Right. Um, so I, I think if 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 Turbin is out there, I think he's the best running back they got on the roster. Like other than Hines catching the ball. For sure. I mean, that, and that's what Hines do it does. And I don't think they're making any mistake about any of that. Uh, this is what he's doing. This is what he's going to do. This is what they brought him in to do. This is what I saw this offense being. This is what uh, they drafted him to do. This is what Frank Wright wants to do with a player like Naheen Hines. Right. So I, Casey I, predicted this. He brought it up in our rookie mock it up before he fuck it up when he finally took, when we took Naheem Hines in the second round. He broke all this down. And now they're, they're down uh, one more, like T.Y. is out. And, yeah, right. And they lost Kane. And now, so like he's just. Jack Doyle's hurt. And he's he's just kind of filling in in, right. in spots here. No, so Turbin's going to come in there and take Wilkins' first carry. Like the first carry of the game last week, Wilkins was in there and gets the first carry. That's going to be Turbin this week, I think. But for me, I would rather not play Turbin. No, and, oh, and, and, yeah, I didn't it, say it would have to be an emergency. Turbin. It would be an emergency for me to need to plug in Turbin. Sure. But everything else in that, in that running back rotation gets watered down except for Nain Hines as a pass catcher. Right. Okay. And I think, you know, I don't want to play turban in any stretch of the imagination i think he's a nice guy to, to to scoop up because they don't have anybody else and i don't think he looked solid in the preseason yeah he did and those pipes always look solid oh yeah nobody pipes wants to get the great. gun show nobody wants to get in front of that Mm-mm. but i mean i just jordan wilkins is not the guy i don't think he's the answer i said it hasn't in, been yet he's he's a jack <laughs> hasn't for, been the for guy lack yet. of a better term <laughs> sure <laughs> casey hates that word it's ridiculous but i just i don't he to me, when we were talking about it in the off season, when you're playing with that third and fourth string, he wasn't showing enough life to be like, oh, this guy's really interesting. That's what he's you not, said. He's that not is exactly than, what you he's said. He's not that much better than than these guys to be like, oh, when it's time for the big boys to be playing, that I'm super interested in this guy. Right. I was able to just by a stretch of a miracle flip him for a third. Some idiot <laughs> took, <laughs> took that trade. I sent it to the entire league. So, you know great guy just i was gonna drop him yeah you did i didn't send him for a fourth that was a great i was like great trade away somebody might be interested in great trade away um picked up flacco this week played him in a one quarterback league because i had to (laughs) crushed it flacco's elite again (laughs) but (laughs) there was someone at the beach house we were watching that game from out on the porch and it was a, a new friend that i met from through a roommate and uh well there was actually two different people that came through and the first guy was like, is Flacco elite? He just asked that question <laughs> randomly. And I just started bugging out because I was like, Flacco's elite again? <laughs> and I had to explain like why it was an inside joke. Well, that was Ian from Revelry. He, he leaves, 
And one of Sean's friends' friends comes over, and so he's real into the game. We're kind of watching the game together while everybody's chit chatting. And uh, I'm like, Flacco does something good. I'm like, Flacco's elite again. And he's like, No, he's not. And I'm like, <laughs> Right? He gets pissed about it almost. Like he's very already thought about this, had this conversation before. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, he's he's balling out and read him off some numbers. He's like, He's not. He's not elite. He's not. <laughs> he's had that conversation he's not. before. And I was like, okay, all right, buddy. I'm not so, going to argue so with you he's, anymore. He's a fan of somebody in the NFC he's AFC a North. He's a Pats fan. So I guess uh, they hate well, the Ravens. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. there's one person he's elite against, it's the Pats. Right, right. right. Hates the Ravens. <laughs> He's so, not. He's I, not. I was just joking because I was thinking that the other guy I was having this conversation <laughs> with was still there, and I just brought it up again, and this guy didn't know anything about that prior conversation. He was just like, he's not. Let's he, get no. Let's get purple and white hats printed right. from China that say <laughs> make Flacco, Flacco elite. elite again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not to take away from the turban and the gun show, somebody that should definitely be on your radar. Scoop them up. I think they got a, a shady situation at the running back position, and it can't hurt. Can't hurt to have them on your roster. I, I agree. I've been uh, if you are a Patreon member, every week we've been putting up a list of uh, waiver wire additions. He's been on there pretty much every week, just near the bottom. But you need to watch out for him. It's not in a necessarily particular order, but <laughs> yes, just uh, just be I have a particular set of skills. Star him up. All right. Well, that'll do it for today's free show. We got a bunch more stuff to get to, but we're gonna have to ship on over to Patreon. We have meet, reached our time quota. As they so, say. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you're on any of the platforms of choice, hit the subscribe button, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Please go on to iTunes and, and hit that five-star review button for us. That'll greatly help us out. We really appreciate it. And then if, you, if you're if you a listener of the podcast or if, you, if you're on YouTube or not, we'd really appreciate a YouTube subscription. Um, it's just another way to get a bunch of our content. It's a little more granular. We break, it up, break this podcast up and, and spit it out there so you get more of a, a specific search for your pleasure we're also going live on sunday you can jump in uh, to that live chat and get your questions answered about who you should be sitting and starting so be on the lookout for that be sure to hit that little alarm button to get all notifications from youtube sure and then you know if you're looking for extra content if you like what you heard and you want to get you want to get your questions answered in depth you want to get a little more physical <laughs> physical well, we haven't gotten any we haven't gotten really physical on Patreon, but I mean, in an internet a, sense, there's a perk that maybe we could be adding that <laughs> something about some physicality, like Funchess running his routes. Get us and out of here, Jason. <laughs> just go over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty. Give us that $5 holler. Get all your questions answered. Get another hour plus of content every single week. And you can go back and listen to all those different shows. They're all on there. Um, and just join the fam. We look forward to seeing you. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties. Married to the game. <laughs>